Are we done freaking out about Kevin Durant to the Warriors yet? Yes, maybe. Kevin Durant not tough enough for this game. Well, I'm viewing it as the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. You hypocrite and liar. <sighs> you know, we ask a lot of our superstar athletes. If you want to be seen as an all-time great, you have to win a championship. But you're supposed to win a title with a team that drafted you, maybe accept pay cuts to help pay for quality teammates, but not superstar teammates because you're supposed to be the alpha dog. Now, fans and media use the term ring chasing in a derogatory fashion. Even though championships are the exact measure of success, they demand players prioritize. <laughs> nope, doesn't count. Choosing to play with other great players who are your friends isn't the right way. Let's talk about that right way. Wilt Chamberlain was an MVP with the 76ers who demanded a trade to a Lakers team loaded with Jerry West and Elgin Baylor. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar didn't like Milwaukee, so he demanded a trade to New York or LA, ended up on a historic team with Magic and James Worthy. Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Moses Malone, Clyde Drexler, the NBA Hall of Fame is filled with players who left their first team to win championships elsewhere, and plenty more who tried but failed. And we could all use some patience and perspective here. Super teams are always hated in the present and lionized after the fact. So let's steer into it this time. Embrace the super team. Celebrate it for what it is, something that's great for sports. No one looks back on the dream team and says, oh, you know, they shouldn't have let all those guys play together. No, we look back on the dream team and say, who let Christian Leitner in the building? The dream team won the gold medal game by 47 points and Venezuela thanked them for the honor of getting their asses kicked by the best. And you know what? That was awesome. Why not get excited for pro sports closest approximations to the dream team? I'm selfish. I want to see the best of all time in my lifetime. I want to be excited for an NBA game in December just because the Warriors are blowing the doors off the Nets or the Lakers. I want to see greatness so undeniable that we can't have stupid sports arguments about it. Oh, that's my utopia. Now, maybe you root for a team that's not the Warriors. That's fine. Cheering for a team that doesn't have four all NBA players on the roster is a noble pursuit, but it shouldn't preclude you from being amazed by the Warriors raining hellfire down on your local scrubs. Uh, example, I hate the New York Yankees to my very core, and their success in the late 90s and early 2000s made me pretty miserable. But I could still sit back in awe at what Mariano Rivera did every time he took the mound. And when he finally blew a save in a big spot, mm, ah. Oh, so much more delicious than the usual sports schadenfreude. And that's an important thing to remember. For all the hoopla that surrounds a super team, they're no sure thing. In each of the four major sports, the team with the best regular season record in history failed to win the championship that year. Things go wrong. Players get suspended. Eli Manning closes his mouth long enough to find a miracle down the field. They turn into great stories and they're only possible because one side is a world-eating juggernaut. Now, this wouldn't be a famous statue if Goliath was the same weight class. And if you're still mad about Kevin Durant to Golden State, well, just relax and wait a little. The lifespan of a super team is shorter than you think it is. Remember when LeBron announced the beginning of the Heat's dynasty? Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. The big three stumbled that first year, won two championships, and then the wheels fell off Dwayne Wade. It was over after four years, or three if we're being honest. As for the Warriors, we were collectively surprised when they won a playoff series just three years ago. Suddenly they're a historically great team and proven champions, but the superstar they added can opt out after a single year. We may only be a year or two away from the Celtics unseating the Cavs in the East or the young Timberwolves becoming a Western power. Nothing is preordained. The only guarantee about this super team and the next one and the one after that is that they'll be fascinating to follow and ultimately good for the sport. And you can be mad about it, but it'll be a lot more fun to grab some popcorn and watch history happen.